Shared my screen. Is it visible to you? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So let us begin our discussion with the same uh, circuit which we have seen yesterday, and uh, today we will see how to perform its simulation practical. Okay. So. what we have seen we have seen that if this is the rlc circuit given to you voltage was not applied uh, this is the series rlc circuit having resistance r inductance l and c in series and this switch was open for infinite amount of time that means this voltage source was disconnected from this rlc circuit for a long time and at time t equal to 0 we are pressing this switch we are turning this switch on so that this voltage source will be connected to this rlc circuit then by uh, drawing the uh, equivalent circuit at time t equal to 0 we can apply kvl for that particular circuit and after applying kvl we can get the second order differential equation and the solution of that second order differential equation we have seen that there are having total four cases case number 1 that is whenever r by 2l square is greater than 1 upon lc that is if the values of r l and c are such that this r by 2l bracket square is far greater than 1 over lc then this is case number 1 it gives the overdamped response and the response of the system is like this this is the final steady state value v and this final steady state value it will achieve after a long time this okay so that is the overdamped response now if you are making it as case number 2 that is r by 2l whole square if this value is equal to 1 over lc then this becomes case number 2 which is a critically damped response and critically damped response is this what is the difference in over damped and critically damped in critically damped the final value is achieved earlier than that of in overdamped response so in overdamped response the final value is reached uh, somewhere here whereas in critically damped system it is achieved somewhere here so on time axis it is earlier so that's why case 2 is better than case 1 now case 3 is whenever r by 2l whole square this value is less than 1 over lc then the system gives under damped response that is such sort of response it gives that means the final value is achieved by the system more earlier than the critically damped response in over damped response that final value was achieved at this particular time in critically damped response final value was achieved at this particular time so it is earlier than the previous one and in under damp system it is achieved at this particular time so it is again earlier than the previous one okay so under damp response it gives the uh, maximum value or the final value or steady state value in earliest time than over damped or critically damped system or undamped even okay so but in this system under damped response there are certain oscillations takes place and these oscillations are of dying out nature 
that means the magnitude of this particular oscillation is the highest than this then this then this then this and the oscillations will die out or the response will settle down after certain amount of time and after settling down the system will give the steady state value so if these are the three cases which you can see and the fourth case in which r is zero that is damping is zero if damping is zero then the system will never attain the final value that means it will only oscillate between the maximum value and minimum value so it will be a sinusoidal curve which will be observed between this maximum value and this zero value okay so practically how it will look like so this is the overdamped response of rlc circuit so this is the rlc circuit Uh, this nine uh, ohm is value of r. This capacitor value is five hundred millifarad, and uh, inductor value is five hundred. So this is the RLC circuit, and this path of two ohm it is provided for the discharging. Now case one, which is overdamped response of RLC circuit, that means value of r by two L whole square, it is greater than one over LC. So for this. it is showing this sort of response and it is taking much more time to reach up to final value okay now these values how we have uh, how i have selected these values that i will tell you uh, later on okay so this is critically damped response in critically damped response case 2 That is R by 2L whole square is equal to 1 over LC. If this is the case, then the value of voltage or the steady state will be reached earlier than that of the previous. You can see here very sluggish response is there. It is taking large amount of time to reach to the final value, whereas this is somewhat faster than that, which is achieving the final value in less amount of time that is the critically damped system and the values how i have selected all these that i will let you know in very uh, small amount of time and this is under damped response where r by 2l whole square it is less than 1 over lc then such these are the values and such oscillations will take place so this type of oscillatory response and after certain amount of time it will reach to its steady state value so such responses are there so this circuit rlc circuit i have simulated for you and this is the website where i have uh, stored that circuit uh, http colon uh, double hash and this is the address so you can copy this and put it in uh, your browser window so that you will be able to observe the same circuit which i have already stored it for you now i'll change the screen i'll stop sharing the screen and i'll share the screen of uh, the practical yes so is it visible to you i change the screen avi yes sir ha huh. okay fine so this is the rlc circuit this is the value of r i'll take this what light okay this is the value of r 9 ohm this c 2 millifarad and this 5 henry this is the rlc circuit now this switch was open for a long time so you can see uh, you can observe in um, uh, yellow spots you can observe the current so current waveform is shown in yellow dots and this is the screen of oscilloscope on which 
you can observe now it is the totally relaxed system so initially relaxed system means there is no current flowing in the circuit there are no voltages stored across any capacitor inductor or no energy stored across inductor so that means voltages and currents are at zero level and it is shown on this oscilloscope screen okay now let us begin the discussion and these values i have set it for the critically uh, sorry uh, under damp system so in under damp in case of under damp system what is the condition condition is this r by 2l whole square that must be less than 1 over lc so what is the value of 1 over lc it is coming out as l value is 5 henry and c value is 2 millifarad so 1 upon 5 into 2 into 10 raised to minus 3 it is coming out as 100 whereas r upon 2l whole square that is 9 upon 2 into 5 whole square it is coming out as 0.81 so 0.81 is far less than 100 so that means the system will behave as if it is a under damp under damp system now let us observe it i'll press this switch so as soon as this switch is pressed current will flow in the circuit and now you can observe on this oscilloscope the green waveform is of voltage and yellow waveform is of current now current flowing through the circuit as well as voltage across capacitor initially both were zero but as soon as we are pressing the switch current will flow in the circuit and that is of the order of of the nature of oscillating as the values of r l and c we have set in such a way that the value of r by 2l whole square it is far less than 1 over lc that means the system will behave as if it is a oscillatory or it is a under damped system okay so you can observe here current was initially flowing in the circuit it was of oscillatory nature and these oscillations are of dying out nature first oscillation is having highest peak then then the second then the third then fourth and so on so forth you can observe in this yellow wave form the um, these oscillations are dying out dying out and at this after this particular moment of time it is gone to zero value so current has gone to zero value now you can observe the same thing on this capacitor wave voltage wave form which is shown by the green wave form initially it was zero then it has raised to certain value then uh, which was more than the voltage v then again it was it has came down again gone up down up down and these oscillations after these oscillations it has settled down at this particular time which is equal to 5 times t which we have already seen in the theory class and now onwards the voltage is settled at v whereas current is settled at zero so this is the steady state condition and now in this circuit you can observe that the current which is flowing through this rlc circuit it has settled down and it is slowly coming to zero value and if we we'll wait for certain amount of time this these spots will totally stop and the value will become equal to zero okay now if i'll change the case that is this is the forced response now if you want to see its source free response that means whenever will this switch was connected means this source was connected to this sub, uh, circuit 
for infinite amount of time that is the steady state has already achieved that is the voltage on this capacitor it is equal to the supply voltage and you can observe it on this screen that it is having the value it has reached to the value of 5 volt or whatever the supply voltage you have applied it has reached to that value and the value of current it is zero you can observe here the yellow dots they are totally stopped in the in this circuit that means it is current is not flowing in the circuit only voltage available across this capacitor it is equal to zero uh, sorry equal to maximum or 5 volt equal to the source voltage okay and now if i open this switch you will find that the voltage on this capacitor it has started reducing and current has started flowing in the circuit and both are of oscillatory nature the voltage wave form from maximum volt or steady state value it has started going down with in oscillatory nature whereas the current in yellow wave form you can see it has also oscillate started oscillations and both these will die out after certain amount of time and we know that for a source free response if we are removing the source for a long time then the voltage as well as the current will steady state values will be zero that means in the circuit there won't be any energy stored across any device that is neither uh, not device components you can say on capacitor also or inductor also and you can observe here both the values are gone to now zero so this is for the under damped system now let us change the values of these components so that it will become once over damped and once critically damped so let us go after this under damped will go for critically damped for designing the value of critically damped now we are um, we know that value of r by 2l whole square that is r is 9 then 2 into l is 5 whole square if you will find out it is coming as 0.81 now 1 over lc if l value will keep it as it is 5 hungry and c value let us say it is unknown so 1 over l into c that is 5 hungry into c is equal to if we we'll put it as 0.81 which is equal to r by 2l whole square so then we have assumed that r by 2l whole square is equal to 1 over lc which is the condition of critically damped and from this you can find out the value of c c will be 0.81 into 5 so it is coming out as 0.25 so if we we'll put the value of c as 250 milli farad and change this value to 250 milli farad then and if now i this now this circuit has settled down no current is flowing in this no voltage on this you can observe on the screen of zero that there is no voltage no current zero voltage and zero current now let us put this switch on as we are putting this switch on this response is of critically damped system and the response of critically damped system as in theory we have seen that it will reach to the final value or steady state value after certain amount of time which is definitely more than that of the under damped system in under damped system it will reach in the smallest amount of time in critically damped system it will reach to 
somewhat more amount of time than that of the under dam system now you can see that in this this there are no oscillations the value of current or the nature of current you can see it has gone up and then it has started reducing and it has gone to zero value whereas the voltage wave form you can see which is in green it has started from zero and it has reached to its maximum value after five times uh, time constant and then it will be maintained to its constant value okay so this is the critically damped system now if you want to design over damped system then for over damped system this ratio of 1 over lc that should be very less than that of r by 2l whole square now r by 2l whole square that value is 0.81 let us take it as 0.4 for 1 over lc l value will keep as same 5 henry so 1 over 5 into c will be equal to 0.4 let us say so if you will calculate this from this the value of c as c equal to 5 into 0.4 so it is coming out as it is coming out as uh, 2 millifarad sorry 500 millifarad okay so i'll make change of this first i'll open this i'll change this to capacitor value to 500 millifarad so if i'll make it as 500 millifarad and then i'll put this switch on let us observe what will be the nature of response so nature of response will be of over damp system so over damp system means it will take some more amount of time to reach to its final value than that of the critically damped okay so you can observe here we have started it at this particular instant that's why current has started increasing and then again it has started reducing we have not uh, allowed the system to totally relax that's why this uh, some transition you are uh, observing so you can uh, repeat the practical while uh, repeating the practical you allow the system to settle down so that means whenever the current flowing through this particular circuit will become equal to zero that is whenever these yellow dots will totally stop then only you try to change the position of this switch either you switch it on or off okay then you will find it uh, clearly you can observe the changes in the response okay so now you can observe here uh, this is the critically damped response you can find this was the very small time whereas you can observe it this is the large amount of time for taking uh, which is taking to reach up to the steady state value okay so i hope you have understood uh, this practical is it i'll stop sharing this screen now and again will come to our theory lecture so is it clear avi yes sir okay fine now let us start our theory lecture further so we'll start solving numericals on this okay so is this screen visible to you
so first numerical numerical also may be asked in the exam so obtain so this is the numerical given to you obtain the expression for the current i of t from the differential equation a differential second order differential equation is given to you instead of giving the values of l and c it is given the differential equation directly so this is the simple uh, series rlc circuit and who's uh, um, uh, after uh, applying kvl to that particular uh, um, circuit the equation of current which we have got is this d2 it by dt square plus 10 di by dt plus 25 i of t equal to 0 and with the initial conditions i of 0 plus as 2 and di 0 by dt uh, is equal to 0 so these are the initial conditions so why these initial conditions are given usually these initial conditions are given for yes for finding out the values of constants C1 and C2. Okay, that's why two initial conditions are given. Now, this is second order differential equation. Now, in this equation, put d by dt as capital D. So you will get d square plus 10d plus 25 into bracket. This is in bracket, and in another bracket, you can say it is i of t is equal to zero. So this is the equation. Now. i of t cannot be zero so this total term this is the quadratic d square plus 10d plus 25 equal to zero which is having two roots as d1 and d2 and that two roots you can find it by if this coefficient of d square is a coefficient of d is b and this constant is c then this a b and c are there then the roots of Uh, this uh, d1 and d2 quadratic uh, you can find it out as minus d plus or minus under root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a so if you will substitute values of a as 1 b as 10 and c as 25 in this you will find that this particular value of under root it is coming out as 25 minus 25 it is 0 that is beta is coming as 0 and alpha value it is minus 5 so both the roots are d1 and d2 equal to minus 5 so from this you can say that both the roots are real and repeated so if real and repeated roots are there then system is critically damped as we have seen in the previous theory class so system is critically damped and the solution of this particular linear differential equation is i of t equal to c1 plus c2 t into e raised to power d1 into t where d1 is equal to d2 is equal to d and it is equal to minus 5 so you can substitute this value of d1 d2 here and the equation Uh, or the solution of this equation will become c1 into c2 into t into e raised to power minus 5 into t okay so this is let us say equation number 1 okay the now the values of constant c1 and c2 we can find out by using the initial conditions now both the initial conditions are given to you initial condition first initial condition is given as i of 0 plus is equal to 2 put in this put this in equation number 1 so that it is i of 0 plus that means t is 0 now so it is equal to 2 2 equal to c1 plus c2 into t t is 0 so c2 into 0 into e raised to power minus 5 into t t is 0 so e raised to 0 so e raised to 0 will become 1 this c2 into 0 will vanish so c1 into 1 is equal to 2 so that means c1 is equal to 2 so first constant we have found out 
using first initial condition as i of 0 plus is equal to 2 now use second initial condition second initial condition is d i of 0, 0 plus by dt is equal to 0 so that means you first substitute this value of c1 in this first equation so what will be the equation i of t is equal to 2 plus c2 into t into e raised to power minus 5t so this will be now new equation after substituting value of c1 now second uh, uh, initial condition is of first order derivative that is di 0 by dt is equal to 0 so for this purpose we know equation of i of t now so differentiate it once so if you will differentiate it once you will find dit by dt so dit by dt will be first term c1 we have substituted it as 2 so 2 into e raised to minus 5t so derivative of this we do it so it is uh, e raised to at derivative of e raised to at is a into e raised to at so a is your minus 5 so 2 into minus 5 into e raised to minus 5t will be first term and second term will be plus c2 into bracket now second term is having two terms t into e raised to minus 5t and both are variables of t so u into v formula you have to use so derivative of u into v so that is first term keep it as it is derivative of first uh, second term plus second term as it is and derivative of first term okay so c2 i have kept it outside the bracket and e raised to 5t i have kept it and into derivative of t which is 1 so e raised to minus 5t is first term plus t you keep it as it is and derivative of e raised to minus 5t so which is minus 5 into e raised to minus 5t okay so after simplifying this you will find that it is minus 10 into e raised to minus 5t plus c2 into e raised to minus 5t minus 5t e raised to minus 5t so this is let us say equation number 2 now put the initial condition second initial condition in this equation what is your second initial condition di by dt at t equal to 0 that is di by dt at t equal to 0 plus is equal to 0 so substitute value of t at 0 and this di by dt it is value its value is 0 so 0 is equal to minus 10 into e raised to power minus 5 into t that is 0 so e raised to 0 which is 1 plus c2 into e raised to 0 which is 1 minus 5 t which is 0 so 0 into e raised to 0 so this term will vanish only this term which is 1 so this is c2 simply c2 into 1 plus minus of 10 is equal to 0 so from this you can get value of c2 as 10 now substitute the value of c2 as 10 in this equation previous equation c1 and c2 both values we have got you substitute these values in equation number 1 so that your i of t equation will become i of t equal to 2 plus 10t into e raised to power minus 5t amperes and this was the equation which we were we were interested to find it okay so i hope you understood this problem now timing is uh, running out but let us start uh, one numerical we'll see how much it will be completed uh, where we'll stop we'll start we'll repeat it in next class but we'll start it in today's class okay so this is the example in which r value is given to you as 20 ohm l value is given as 0.05 henry c value is given as 25 20 microfarad and this switch was open for infinite amount of time and at time t equal to 0 this switch is pressed that is this 100 volt supply 
it is connected to this rlc circuit at time t equal to 0 find out the current transient means we are interested to find equation of current during transient that is i of t during transient response we want to find out so now first step is very simple we will go step by uh, step wise so very first step is you draw the equivalent circuit at time t equal to 0 plus so at time t equal to 0 this switch is pressed so at time t equal to 0 plus this will be the equivalent circuit this 100 volt source will be connected to this rlc circuit so this is the rlc circuit and or you can say this is the equivalent circuit at time t equal to 0 now in order to find the equation of it first you find out uh, you apply the kvl for this particular uh, um, circuit so now apply kvl so it is v equal to voltage across this r plus voltage across l plus voltage across c okay now this v equal to what is voltage across this r that is i into r so 20 into i of t so 20 into i of t will be voltage across this resistance voltage across this inductor it is given as l di by dt l value is 0 0.05 into di by dt okay so 0 0.05 into dit by dt plus the voltage across this capacitor it is 1 over c integration i t d t okay so 1 over c c value is 20 into 10 raise to minus 6 integration of i t d t okay now integration sign is there in this circuit we want that it should be complete differential equation so in order to make it differential equation differentiate the whole equation or differentiate both the sides once okay so you will get this will become 100 it is a constant value it will become 0 20 into dit by dt plus 0 0.05 d2 it by dt square and this 1 over c that is 1 over 20 into 10 raise to minus 6 into i of t equal to 0 so this is the equation now we know that if we want to solve any differential equation its higher order term it should have coefficient 1 so here higher order term is d2 it by dt square its coefficient is 0 0.05 it should be 1 so divide the whole equation by 0 0.05 okay so after dividing whole equation by 0 0.05 and rearranging the terms we will get d2 it 